Hi everyone, it's Simon from High Plane Games with a review of Power Node. This is a PC puzzle game that I grabbed on Steam a couple of weeks ago when it released for £1.99. The reason why I grabbed this game is that it so reminds me of one of my favourite games of all time, Mini Metro. Yes, that game where you've got to pass around the passengers so that the trains don't bottleneck in the stations and passengers will get crowded and squashed. <laughs> uh, it's coming to PS4 as well, by the way, that game. I'm going to double dip. This is very similar, but instead of passengers, you're basically replacing it with uh, sums and maths. And so slightly less sexy in terms of a uh, subject, but it still works really similarly. Instead of train stations, you've now got number stations and they're circular and they will be filled up with green liquid whenever you basically send the correct number to it. You do that by basically using the diamond shaped uh, numbers on your screen who are like emitter pulses. So a one will pulse out a one every few seconds, a two a two every few seconds, a three a three and so on. And everyone works at the same speed. So you will start off with a two and a three emitter and you'll need to join them together to make a five node and then push the five out to the five station, thus filling it up. That will then turn into green liquid, fill up the station, and once the liquid reaches the top, the station is full, it will pop and disappear. And you, essentially any node that's now not in the working network that you've built up will then disappear with it. Now, as it gets more trickier and you get different stations with different numbers and they'll pop up randomly across the screen, you've got to think and reprogram your brain and therefore your network into what's the most efficient way of doing something. And that's where my brain falls down because I'm not so good at that. But I love games that try and challenge me on it and I'm just like, ah, I wish I could do so much better. So I'm really sorry that the gameplay that you're seeing on here is just me derping. <laughs> I have no other explanation for it. Um, so yeah, what I really, really liked about this is that, especially early on when you're dealing with uh, like twos, threes, fours, fives, um, trying to get those nodes together and really being efficient makes you really think about actually how you're gonna do something because the more things you connect to a node or connect from an emitter, obviously it can only do one at a time and it will go round in a cycle, but it's always at the same speed. So the more you rely on a specific node, the more bogged down it gets, the slower and therefore less efficient that it is. So as stuff pops up around the screen, you're constantly thinking, oh, can I now actually get rid of that part of the network and rebuild it over here so that I can send out the emitters much more quickly? And it's quite geographically focused because you're looking at like rate of travel uh, and length of distance for nodes as well as how bogged down they are. Um, what I really liked as well, and I can't vouch for how far this goes, because again, noob player, um, once you start getting plus uh, numbers, obviously, it then started springing out for me minus numbers as well. So if I was trying to get a five and I'd got loads of twos and threes or a one and four together or something like that to make fives, that then opened up me having potentially a six emitter and a minus one emitter together or a four and a minus two. And because those uh, emitters generally were slightly less used they're really good ways of like approving efficiency and getting new ways out um but yes you then have to think about where you've played the placement of stuff as well because it's all straight lines there's no curves in this game so you need to kind of think of that as well and the game does like to throw up a random and you're like oh that's going right the way through the middle of everything grr uh, and you've just got to kind of make something slightly longer and therefore less efficient so then you're like no um what I don't know is what it then does beyond that. I don't know if it does multipliers or anything like that because I've not been able to get that far because I'm so terrible at the game. <laughs> uh, things that are missing from this game, and bear in mind it is $1.99, so uh, you are looking at your budgeter end. Um, I wish that there was some like random seed generator or something like that, or at least some humanly programmed levels uh, so that everyone is actually can have maybe like an online leaderboard but that you can have the same experience again and again and do a better score on that same experience because then you can tell whether or not you're getting better at the game. For me, although it's random uh, procedurally generated levels, they do seem to stick within a certain framework um, so that they aren't wildly massively different and they all start off relatively the same as well for the first few nodes before it branches off somewhere. Um, the higher your score is that you get down the bottom, then the more things it likes to throw at you, obviously. Um, but because you're so time bound, because the green liquid drains as well as there being a timer around the outside of each station, 
um, you're either going to sink or swim very, very quickly, and that might put off some people as well. However, if you're a fan of Mini Metro and you're a fan of these types of games, I do urge you to pick up Piano Node. I've been really enjoying it, and hopefully you would too. Thanks for watching. You take care. Bye for now. This channel is just one of my many projects that cover games, music, and film. If you enjoy any of these and would consider supporting me to develop further in the future, you can do so by visiting patreon.com forward slash Thank you for your time and for watching the video.